Ooh, good morning, y'all. Uh, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you. Good that. Yeah, dig. Hey, it's your girl, you dig. Um, it's early in the morning. I got my cup of Joe, man, in my black owned business. Um, probably not gonna make a face appearance because I'm looking a little rough. I mean, not too rough because you know me, I don't be looking too bad. But anyway, um, back to the subject at hand. Today, we're going to be converting the Epson 20AA to DTF. Today, we're going to be doing waste tank, external waste tank. We're going to be removing rollers. We're going to run, um, we're going to run some cleaning cycles because the printer currently has the regular ink in it. So, we have to flush out the original ink. So, I have some... I have some cartridges, some empty cartridges, um, to put clean solution in, run a couple clean. So, hope you got some time because you're gonna be hanging out with me for a little bit. Yeah, dig. So, uh, hold on tight. Let me get everything, get myself together. It's early in the morning, and uh, we'll start with the external waste tank. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh. Hold on, we'll be right back. <laughs> Yitty. What's happening? So I guess I did kind of make up a uh, make a short appearance. Hello there. Yeah, I need my coffee in the morning. I really do. I'm not awake. I'm shooting this video. I'm a zombie. I'm not awake. But we're gonna get through it. So, alright, so first thing first. We're gonna do the external waste tank. Um, it's very similar to um, doing the external waste tank on the XP 15,000. The only difference is um, this printer has two waste lines instead of one, but there's a solution to that. No worries, you dig? So let's get started. Y'all gotta forgive my mess right now. I'm uh, in the middle of like rearranging. I'm almost done though. I had to make room to make sure that she was going to have room to print. Yeah, dig. So, your external waste tank is going to be on the right side of the printer. So, I'm going to open it up. When frame, so y'all can. I'm going to have to back that thing up. Girl, you're looking good. Won't you back the thing up? All right. So, like I said, the right side of the printer, and with this, there's no screws or anything. You just got to pop this panel off. Now, I'm going to keep it all banned with you. 1,000. I um, I was excited when I got it, and I kind of pulled it, and I cracked it a little bit. So, don't be like me. Take your time and just, you know, it'll snap. You want to also have... Maybe a little screwdriver around. Just want to pry around it till it comes loose. Just keep playing with it. She'll pop off. All right, so once you get your panel off. All right, y'all, so when you open it up, it's going to be two waistlines. That's what these two are right here. But anywho, first thing you want to do when you see these two waistlines, each waistline is going to have a, it's going to have a clip on it. So you kind of just want to squeeze that clip and scoot it back on the line, on each line. Just pull the clip back so it's not securing the line anymore, basically. You got little fat fingers like I do. It might be difficult for these little tubes, but now after that, you want to pull them off. But since I got two, I'm gonna use this little um, this little T adapter for the two lines. So I'm gonna put a line on each side of this, and then. The regular line. So you want to take these and just yank them off. 
it might take a little force. Um, take your time. But they'll slide off. They're made well because you're not supposed to be in here messing with it, but it'll come off. I'm always, you always, well, not you, but I always feel like I'm going to break something when I'm taking off these hoses. Uh, ooh. There we go. She did not want to give up. So since I already had that side off, I'll go ahead and just attach it to my adapter while I'm here. Now, these adapters that I have, I don't love because of the type of tips they have on them. So I usually cut the tip off, actually. So I'm going to do that. All right, I had to switch uh, which connect I use. It's still a three-way split, but it's just shaped a little different. It's not the T. Because I cut the tips off my T, and uh, I didn't have to. This waistline is a little skinnier than the, the one that was on the Epson, uh, the 15,000. So I didn't have to cut it off. So um, I got one side on right there. So I'm just going to put the other side on. And then, y'all seen this before, so I ain't going to waste too much time. All right, so when you're done, your two lines should become one. You dig, bars. So now I'm just going to add a... a into this I haven't decided if I want because I got come on thing. I got black and then I got clear I like the black but I just don't know if it's long enough because I want to run it up under the table so I think I'm just gonna go with the clear this time yep I guess that so yeah I'm just gonna go with the clear this time but I am going to Drill a hole so it can slide right through there. Yeah, it is. All right, so this is basically, this is your external. So this is your external waste tank. You got two lines that you made one. You got, boom, I'm going to cut this short. But now I'm just going to drill a, a hole in the side of the door. Y'all don't need to see that. And then we'll move on to the rollers. Yeah, it is. Hole is drilled. Um, this is where it connects. I put some tape on it just for, I mean, it's up there nice and snug, but just to make me feel better, I threw a little tape up there. It don't look bad. And then I, um, I got this external line that once I get the printer in the position that I want it, um, I'll cut it to the length that I want to cut it uh, when I run it to the bottle. I got another big water bottle. I'm going to run it down there. So, Let's move on to the rollers. All right, so the rollers. To do the rollers, when you're looking inside the printer, the rollers will be right in front of you. So there's actually two rows of rollers. So what I'm going to do, on the first row, I'm going to take them out, but I'm going to leave two rollers. Okay, so on the first row, I'm going to take out just the the middle rollers meaning I'm gonna leave one on each side so in total for the first row I'm gonna take out one you got 18 rollers to take out on the first row second row the same thing leave one roller on each end that's what I'm doing um just to avoid it scraping or anything so in order to grab the rollers you will see it grab the rollers I got I'm using my uh, my weeding tool because it's good, it has a hook. So what you want to do is kind of dig in there and get, get a good grip on a roller so you can just pull it out. So this is my first time doing it. This is all from me um, researching. So here we go. It said it should be easy peasy. Easy peasy, Georgia Weezy. All right, so I got my first one out. I'm going to kind of leave it where it hooked it so you can see. When I pulled my first one out, I guess I hooked it like right in the middle of the wheel. And then I yanked up. Now, you want to make sure the spring comes out with it. That way, you don't get no scraping or nothing. So, that was really easy, y'all. Let's do the rest of them. I'll do a few more with you, and then I'll just finish the rest. Because this will get boring with y'all just watching it. Something just sprung up and flew somewhere in the printer. I hope they don't mess nothing up. Yeah, y'all. So, so far, I got out three rollers by just taking my hook. Going underneath, getting a good grip on the roller, yanking that baby out. So I'm just going to finish this first row. 
Then I'll be back before I start the second row. Yeah, it is. All right, I got the entire first row out besides them, uh, the two on the, each end. Now I'm just going to start the second row. Yeah, it is. Now the second row is a little further back. Maybe a little harder to get to. The springs do not want to let go, I tell you that. But yeah, same process. Okay, I have got all the rollers out. I even switched freaking picking tools. Um, That second row was definitely more difficult than the first row. But once I changed picking tools, it was okay. So y'all, rollers are out. Let's see if we can really see them. See, they're all gone besides one on the end there, one on the end there. So we're basically um we're basically almost at the finish line here. So now I am going to fire the printer on and uh first of all let's let's fill up some carts with uh with cleaner solution and then run a couple print head cleaners and see what happens. Yeah it is. All right so now um, I'm going to fill up the refillable carts with cleaning solution. So, in that case, all right, so um, right now, like I said, we're only going to do cleaning solution. But when we do do the white one, this particular printer, you got four channels of white, which I feel like is so dope. Um, and I believe they said with the more channels of white that you have, you know, the less percentage of white that you have to use in the RIP program. But we'll see if that's true. But right now, we're just going to do some cleaning solution. So let's do that. Um, So, me, I have homemade cleaning solution. Um, It has certain ingredients in it. I'm not going to share my recipe for my DIY cleaner because... It works for me, but I don't want, you know, being that it's DIY, I don't want it, somebody else to use it. And if something happens, they'd be like, oh, you digs it. No. So if you want to know, uh, Google DIY inkjet printer, um, print head cleaners, uh, go to the Facebook groups and type it in. They got, they got some of their recipes up there. But, um, man, how I get ink on my shirt? You see? That's when you're working hard. But anywho, um... Yeah, but um, yeah, so this is homemade cleaning solution that I am going to fill up these carts with. Yeah, it is. I guess I'll just get them filled up first. Matter of fact, let's turn on the printer. Let's turn, let's turn her on and see what she do first. So, we're going to, um, oh yeah, and these carts that I have, these have auto reset chips. So every time you take them out and click them back in, they reset their cell, which I thought was cool. But yeah, so we're going to hit the replace ink button so that thing can slide over. And we're just going to do it in order. All right, so let's fill up the light magenta first. So you've done sublimation, man. You, you, you're really familiar with this process. So that's the fill hole. That's the air hole. Take the plug out of the fill hole and fill it up first, right? That's what you're going to do. All right, so I messed up. First of all, this is the fill hole. The one in the back is the air hole. I knew that. I just got a little mixed around because they um they put the plugs in here backwards. Usually the fill hole has this plug in it. So the um, initially the top hole is the fill hole. And the bottom hole is the air hole. So sometimes these tabs being here so tight. All right, so there we go. Fill hole, air hole. Fill air. I always remember that because the fill hole is always the one closest to the sticker. So the one closest to the sticker, don't fill that thing up. You almost want to have it at a slant. Hello. Hey, honey. Hello. Can't really see it because it's clear. Well, yeah, you can. It's going in there pretty decent. Huh? I'm shooting a video. Oh, okay. So you can see it going in. 
boom and that's filled up but now you need to prime it so the flow good all right now in order to prime it you want to take out your your vent hole your air hole stick your syringe in there there's a little pocket right here that you want to fill up we're going to see it when we actually do the ink but you want to fill this pocket up that let you know it's like a chamber that let you know that it's primed up all right so i got a little bit of red on on the, the syringe but i ain't doing no tripping on that but to prime it you just want to see she good you see how it's coming out she's good and primed so we're gonna put that one in so I'm just going to pull out the, I should have did these in order, but I'm going to pull out this LK, right? Replace it with the new LK, like so. And you keep doing that, repeating that process over and over. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to come back and run the cleaners. Yeet -yeet. So we got all the refillable ink cartridges uh, in the printer now with the cleaning solution in it. So let me just see what happens, let it do. Oh, make sure you take out your air plugs or nothing will happen. I don't take my air plugs out until I put all my cartridges in the printer. I don't know. It's just a thing that I do. All right, y'all almost messed up. Before I run these head cleaners, I need to go ahead and run my line into my bottle before I get ink all over my table and everywhere. So I'm just going to make a hole in this bottle, run this through here, and put it under the table. Nothing special. Yeet it. All right, so I'm running my second head cleaning. And I don't know if y'all can see that because it's kind of dark up under this table. But I see ink coming out, which is good. So that means the solution is running through it. It's pumping right now, as you can see. And in the bottle, it's a bunch of ink and bubbles it's been sitting for a while so but yeah it's definitely uh it's definitely moving the color ink out so i think i'm gonna run another one until i see it that is clear in this bottle again sorry for the the poopy shot but all i did was put cleaner solution in here and i'm getting blue and black inks coming out which is good all right, so now, um, catch y'all up real quick. I ran two cleanings with the cleaning carts in. Ran two um, print head cleaning cycles. Um, I saw the ink go from like black, light blue, to almost definitely clear. I ain't gonna run another one. I think I'm good. So I'm about to install the carts. All right, when you take these carts out, make sure you. Plug the air hole up when you store them. We're just going to do it from left to right, my guy. Tell them when to go in there. Use about half of the... Let me see. They use about half of the uh, cleaning cart. I think that's good. So, uh, so we're going to do our four whites. Put the first one in here. I usually like, rather than shake my cartridges, I just hit it with the, you know what I mean? Like the seesaw motion. I felt, I felt like, mm, I feel like when you shake them, it put air in them, you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of seesaw them things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the ba 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 ba. But I'm going to put them all in and come right back. Yeah, yeah. All right, so got all the, all the uh, refillable ink cartridges and I just like to push on them, make sure, you know, it's making a connection where it says push. They all snap down really good, so I ain't doing no tripping on that. Um, I'm going to take these air holes out. It's important that you take these air holes out because it won't print if you don't. And that's the whole point. Yee -yee. All right. Let the printer know I'm done with changing the ink cartridges. And then... Uh, I'm gonna run one cleaning and see what that do. And then print up, I'm gonna do one cleaning and print a nozzle check and see what it do. And then we'll run another one if I feel like I need to. So hold on to your heat buckle. We'll be back. All right, so it just did this little thing after uh, you installed the cartridges. And uh, we're gonna run a print head. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and print the first nozzle check. See what's popping. Yeti. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it's safe to say that we need to do another print head cleaner. Right? Did I even do a dead one? I'm gonna do a second one. Cause I know at first I thought the paper just came through, but it says it, it completed. So let's do another print head clean. All right, so second clean is done. Let's run a nozzle check. So I'm still getting clear pages. I'm like, I don't know if if it's even printing. So yeah, I think we gotta run another cleaning. We still ain't getting nothing out of the nozzle check. <clears throat> What's happening, y'all? Hey, so it's a brand new day. Um, actually it's like a couple days later. Um, quick update. The uh, 2880 uh, passed all the nozzle checks once I, I, um, I cleaned the head. I did a, a print head cleaning maybe three more times. And um, it came back good. Uh, I've printed um, off of it, but uh, I didn't get back to the video um, because uh, I, I had a situation where I couldn't get back to it. Um, but I'm back. And it's actually going to be included in this video. So um, the reason why the content is so late, yesterday I lost my beloved doggy teddy boo boo who has been with me and my wife for 15 years that's our baby so it was extreme hard, it was an extremely hard day yesterday so um i wanted to finish up this video and um the printout i'm going to be doing i'm gonna go ahead and do a printout for my baby teddy boo boo rest in peace mommies love you we're gonna go ahead and do a canvas print for Teddy Boo Boo in remembrance because that's that's our baby and we love him. So you want to go ahead and um you know stick around and we're gonna do that. Yeah, D. But uh 2880 is booming. Uh I love it. Way more than the 1500. Um and um I think I I got the 1500 unclogged. I got it um I got it printed from the rear again, but I just it's just more complicated, you know what I'm saying, than this 2880. 2880 came out the gate, giving me beautiful prints. And um, I struggled with color quality and, and things like that with the 15,000 accurate, but the 2880 accurate 10, just right now, I like it. <laughs> so I ain't gonna talk y'all no more. Let's go ahead and um, I got the image. I'm going to get the image set up in AccuRip. And uh, we're going to print it out. And I'm just going to uh, show you a print. We'll see, though. Yeah, it did. All right, y'all. So right now I have A3 sheets loaded into the printer. Uh, for right now, I have my uh, Asa box down for an exit tray. That way it don't bend and it's scraping and everything like that. It's been working for me so far. Until I go ahead and put in that order at South Bay Creations for that nice little exit tray he got over here. So I'll be coming soon. Yeah, did. But anywho, um, I'm gonna go ahead and press print and uh in the program. And we gonna we gonna uh we gonna get raw. Alright. We printing to make sure I was on the right side of the film. You feel me? Oh, shit. Can you see that? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? 2880 game. So, with this um 2880, uh, I have been doing since I got it, I've been doing nightly maintenance on it. And when I come in here in the morning, all I gotta do. Is refill my ink, shake them up, put them back in the printer, do one to two print head cleanings. Uh, yesterday I had to do two print head cleanings and the colors were perfect. Um, this morning I only had to do one. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do another video and go through my nightly maintenance. 
because I'm trying to keep this printer as clean as possible. I'm trying to keep it unclogged because that's when you run into the issue. When when you get to the point where you're not cleaning and it get a severe clog, then you know then that's when it's a headache and it's it's harder to come unclogged. That's why you got to do preventative maintenance. That's basically what nightly maintenance is, preventative. I worked in the hospitality business in the engineering um, department of hospitality for over 10 years. And we had a system called PMing, preventative maintenance. When you go, you go in a hotel room and you just, if you, you check to see if anything's broken. You're changing AC parts and filters and things so it doesn't break down while they're in there. You're trying to prevent a situation. So... I should have went into the 1500 like that, but I was just so green to DTF. The 1500 taught me a lot about DTF, and I'm so glad I did actually start with that one because, I mean, it taught me this one, actually, and it, it makes me appreciate this one and want to take care of it even more. But like I said, um, I'm still going to use the 15,000, maybe. It's just harder to use. This is a lot easier. But if this one is down in maintenance mode or whatever, then I'll bust out that 15000 It's good to have a nice little backup. You did. But um, we're almost done. This printer prints pretty fast. The 15000 took mm, like 20 minutes almost to do. Like if you're using a 13 by 19 sheet and you not filling it up, but almost filling it up. Man, it took like 16 minutes. Not this bad boy. This here is a workhorse and I'm in love. I'm in love with a printer. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I hope my wife didn't hear that. <laughs> well, yeah. So, we almost done, man. Nice coverage on the white. Y'all don't know how happy I am to see white ink. Because my white has been clawed on that 15000 And she done. As I'm talking to y'all today, she's finished. So, let's see. Oh, nice. It's a little dark, so I can I need to actually bring I actually need to hold on with the camera. And I'm in love with, can y'all see that? And there it is. Hey Teddy Boo Boo, he was on the beach with the wind blowing in his hair. Mommy loves you, Teddy Boo Boo. Wake in peace. Oh y'all, he was the sweetest boy. The sweet alone life. Happy. He was loved and he knew it. And he was just cool. He was my dude. Yeah, he did. Well, we're going to put this on the canvas. He's my boy. I actually, I'm actually going to print that again, y'all. Because I want it lighter than that. It's too dark. All right, so I reprinted it um, in Accurate. And I stretched it a little bit to uh, fit the canvas. And this is the final result. I think that's perfect. The other one was way too dark. So we're going to press this on the canvas. It is. All right, guys. So here's my printout. Nice colors of my teddy boo-boo. Here's the canvas. Dollar Tree canvas, 8 by 10. We're going to throw it on up there. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to press it like a shirt. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna press it like it hurt. Throw that thing on there. Oh, I got my heat pressure at 300 for eight seconds. I mean, it's really dark. You might not see me. I'm sick, fine. I am live, so. I'm just kidding. I'm not live. I'm not live. Boom, so got a canvas, like I said, 300 for eight seconds. Just line it up, make sure that thing even, make sure it don't move. All right, so this is a cold peel, so it got to cool down. Yeah. I'm just going to move it over here just for a second. Let it cool down. All right, so I'm back, y'all. Kind of forgot about you, but I cold peeled it. Um, Then I repressed it 
with parchment paper. And when I did cold peel, I didn't wait long enough and it was a little, it was still a little warm, but hey, oh, oh, don't you fall like, there you go. DTF on the canvas. Rest in peace, Teddy Boo. So yeah, y'all, DTF can go on a lot of things. I'm excited about this machine. Um, appreciate y'all rocking with me. To the next one, I'm out like a light. Yeah, it did.